That means your heteroplasmy rate may be 30% when we sample it in your cells. If you live in a shit environment that does everything wrong, eventually you're gonna develop Alzheimer's disease. <coughs> Guess what the difference between type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's disease is fundamental. The percent change of heteroplasm has nothing to do with your DNA. Guess what else Doug found? Only 10 to 15% of human diseases that we know about today are truly genetic. That means 80% are based on this heteroplasmy rate. Why do you have to know about this? Heteroplasmy is very simple to understand without all the crazy quantum uh, biologic things. On your input to mitochondria, it's called electron chain transport, as Ruben told you. All foods are broken down to electrons. All electrons are exactly the same everywhere in the universe, with one exception, the amount of light that's on that electron. That light actually programs information and data, okay? Your mitochondria is your sixth sense. It is designed to pay attention to the environment you're in and deliver energy throughout the cell in a myriad of different ways. But the key thing is, it's what turns on and turns off what's in the nuclear genome. My profession has spent 150 years looking at the wrong thing. We're looking in the genome. The answer is not in the DNA. The answer is in the mitochondria. And that's what Doug has fundamentally found. The problem with Doug is he doesn't know, understand a lot about water, because most of you may not know this, what is around the mitochondria in your cell? It's actually cell water. And the crazy thing is in biochemistry, we subtract out all that cell water. And we never even think about it, twice about it. Ruben's already told you it's the main battery that runs the show. That's how it connects the two. For every one angstrom increase between the respiratory proteins, and for those of you who do not know anything about mitochondria, don't fret. There's five cytochromes. Number one, two, three, four. The fifth one is called the ATPase, where ATP is made, okay? There, the dimensions there are between 30 and 60 angstroms, normally on a good functioning mitochondria. Every increase in one angstrom reduces electron tunneling by a factor of 10. So when I hear a dude come up here and start talking to you about flow and not mention the word mitochondria one time, you need, you need to understand due diligence. Flow is all about energy. And energy, all of you know about Einstein, equals MC squared. My key come to Jesus moment was I realized that e equals MC squared is two times three equals three times two. I realized that Einstein's equation described nuclear explosions. Each one of us can figure out we don't have nuclear explosions in us. So what did I do? I reversed the equation. It turns out that light, when you slow it down, turns into things with mass and turns into things with matter. So that means fundamentally we come quantized from the vagina with the ability to make everything we really need. We don't need it from a bottle. Now we do need food, why? Food allows us to disconnect from the Earth's magnetic field and from the sun. And the more you live your life disconnected, the more food you have to eat. So how did I fix myself? I started to live a connected life. I took my shoes off, I got outside, I was a big fat ass, and I was naked, I was doing CT, my wife thought I was crazy, <laughs> but then crazy worked. And I was surprised, and I kept, kept at it. I did it to my son. My son lost 70 pounds in six weeks. I did it to my nephew. My nephew went from having no direction, low dopamine state, bad alpha waves, he's now a Navy SEAL. Changed his life just with life. Fast forward, I told you I'm a neurosurgeon. I went to medical school at LSU, did my residency at LSU down in New Orleans. That's a subtropical environment, not optimized for my mitochondrial DNA. But I was in really good shape back then, even though I was doing everything possible to ruin myself during my training. So I got to Nashville, and that's where, Nashville, Tennessee, with Music City, and that's where I just started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And honestly, I didn't eat 
as much as I thought I could to get to be 360 pounds. The crazy part of the story is I realized almost eight years ago that if I was gonna continue on my day job to try to help people in my operating room, that that job was killing me. And I was actively dying doing it. So I told my wife, I said, we have to move. We have to move to an environment that has a much higher quantum yield. Well, my wife happens to be from New Orleans. I went there, and I was like, you know, that's the 29th latitude. In fact, it's about the only place outside of parts of Florida that I could go in the States, <laughs> Hawaii's also. But the key thing that you need to understand, when I say low quantum yield, I'm talking about the amount of sunlight. So here in the UK, that should really perk your ears up because you have a big problem here, okay? <laughs> The big issue for me is when I change this, quantum yield no longer is a latitude story. It's no longer a geography story because we've allowed non-native EMF into our world. All of us are using it. Every single person in here is using it. What you don't know, what maybe Ben Greenfield doesn't know about that device that he put right here, is it knocks electrons off your cell membrane. And the way light works, it works photoelectrically. That's why Nobel, the Nobel Prize in 1922 is given to Einstein. You have to have electrons in your body to assimilate the light. That's what powers water. And the two key frequencies are always purple and red. That's why you always see me. Purple socks, red shoes. I also have a purple jacket, but I forgot to wear it. <laughs> it's the key. Now we're going to fast forward. I moved to 